Hey friends, we're getting towards the end of our ASP.NET Core 101 tutorial. There's been a lot of concepts. We've talked about Razor and Razor Pages. We've brought in HTML and CSS. Well, we've done Model View Controller. We've done a lot of different things. But you can see that ASP.NET is really flexible. It lets you do whatever you want, whatever way you want to do it. But we're going to introduce a new concept here called Blazor. And Blazor is, is interesting. It's, it's a new app model, a new way of thinking about your applications. Okay. We're going to put that Blazor app model inside of our application though. ASP.NET doesn't prescribe how you can do things. So we thought it would be cool to basically introduce a new component. We've been making Razor pages, but if you recall when we put that, that list of products, we just stuck it on the, the index page, right? It just sure. kind of like does its thing. Let's go and look at that. So we were over here on our Razor page and we have a list of products and we wrote this at the very beginning. Uh, we said for each we for each over our list of products and we put in these divs. Uh, but the responsibility for what this did is kind of spread in a number of different places. Mm -hmm. And the Blazor application model would let us make that a reusable component. That sounds like a good idea. Mm, can yeah. Compartmentalize that and just Exactly. So it's want. its job and everything is all going to be kind of self-contained. Uh, and it also allows us to write some C sharp code uh, in our page. Uh, that will run on the server and then in the future run uh, on the server or the client. So let's see what that would look like. So we're basically going to modify our application a little bit. Uh, it already has a web API. It already has a number of pages. It has a great model. It has great services. Let's see if we can get ratings working uh, with Blazor integrated into our ASP.NET application. Uh, and we're going to go a little bit slow. So yeah. you might have to bear with us for a few, uh, Taking a, it few slow. a few episodes. All right. All right. So why don't we create a uh, components folder mm -hmm. first and foremost. So over here on the side, we've got services because we've got that one service for managing our JSON file. We've got the existing pages that we already have. And these use the Razor mm -hmm. syntax that we're familiar with now. Then we've got our model product. And we've got controllers, and that was using the model view controller pattern. But we're going to do what you said, and we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call it components because we're going to make a, a Razor component, and we're going to basically kind of upgrade that to a Razor Great. component. All right. And so in this case, the responsibility of the component we're about to create has to deal with just getting the list of products and then right. doing and, things and from there. And managing so. some state as well, because right now we don't have a concept of it being selected, because I want to be able to select the product in the card and then manage the ratings, and then the card would go away. Mm -hmm. So there's no concept of it being uh, uh, selected or having a state. So yep. let's go and say add new item. We have the big list of stuff. Yep, there is a lot to choose from, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm seeing Razor Component there. Yep. So. so here's Razor Component, and you'll notice it's a dot Razor extension, and that keeps it separate from those dot CSHTMLs mm -hmm. that we've been using. Uh, what should we call it? I think we were saying product list. Yeah. Okay, product list dot Razor. Yep. Okay. Now you come right in here, and it looks like well, it looks like HTML because it is. It looks like it's got a block here called at code, code which is interesting. And that at like code turns yellow like we've seen before, and I can write some, some C sharp down there. Mm -hmm. uh, our original list was kind of like a div with a for loop. Yep. So I'm thinking we need to take out, yeah, that chunk and then copy and paste it here. Right. So let's try this. Let's grab all of that because the goal here is going to be to get it back where it was, except we're using this new model. So we'll come over to here, and we'll do that. It'll be totally self-contained, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, we had our div class uh, card columns, but it doesn't know about model, and it doesn't know about some of the things we want to use. So we're going to do our some using statements. And these using statements are just like the ones that we would use uh, in our C Sharp uh, code, except these are being done at the top of our Razor component and we're using the at sign just in front of it. And yep. if Contoso Crafts is our site and our models are in here. So we're just telling our page. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. Models awesome. just lit up there. And then we need to add our services. Okay, services. And uh, then remember how we were doing injection. We were injecting in our services and telling people about stuff. Let's inject. This is a new keyword. Uh, what do we call it? JSON. JSON file product. Oops. Okay, and then we'll name it product service. And then instead of model, which is what we were doing over mm -hmm. there in our, we'll call our product, service. product service. And then we'll just go and say get products. 
cool. All right, so 4-H product is still doing its thing. Everything else is the same. So, so far, other than a little bit of uh, preliminary things at the top, it's not too different. Mm -hmm. You had given me a card before, but we don't have any place to put our, um, our, uh, our ratings. Yeah, so maybe we should add another button, and when the user clicks on that, we can get like a pop little pop-up screen. Yeah, get some more info. Mm -hmm. So let's make a div for that. And then you were doing whole like card this and card that. Mm -hmm. So we can do card footer. That is okay. a good one to use for this. Excellent. So and then within that, we can create a small tag okay. with the class being text uh, dash muted. I see some muted text, some ch kind of relaxed text. Yeah, it's okay. very chill. All right. And then inside, let's insert a button. Okay. So this will be the button they'll click on. Yeah. Right. And so uh, when the user clicks it. Um, which you can use the on click keyword for that. Okay, so let's say more info for that button. Yep. And then you're saying on click. Now, this is interesting. Look at these pop ups here the, uh, in the IntelliSense. They're little ats, right? These are Blazor events. See how it goes dot, dot, dot? This yeah. is an interesting thing. If I hit on, mm, I'm going to get a lot that. of stuff. Yeah. So what they're doing here is they're, there's so many things you can do that they, they do the IntelliSense in two steps. So you go like that, and you go on, and then you said on click. So, oh, and look, it turned purple. That awesome. indicates that it's a, a, going to be managed on the server side. Mm -hmm. So within that, we'll put some, uh, we, have to, we have to keep track of selecting our product, right? Yeah. So let's do variable like the E. E or event yeah. or whatever. And then we have to write some code later. But when, when someone selects a product, we need to, to keep track of that. Right. And yet, we need to keep the product ID in mind. Okay, and this doesn't exist yet, because we have to write that down here at some point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then let's go and just put uh, some classes and stuff that I think we need on this. Because when the button gets clicked on, we also want to pop up a dialog box. Yeah. So let's do a data toggle, just so we can, you know, when we press this button again, it'll, it'll toggle. Close. Yeah. Yep. So data hyphen is a place to add additional kind of like along for the ride information that we can go and get a hold of later. But later, so we've got modal. This is we'll have a modal di dialog, mm -hmm. and then in the future, what's what are we targeting? Yeah, we're targeting uh, what piece of UI is some be? some modal thing that we haven't made yet. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, this is our main button. So there's some bootstrappy stuff that we can do. Yeah. So um, Bootstrap has a lot of different buttons. You can go to their site and see all the different kinds. But we're mm. using BTN, which is their primary keyword, and then BTN dash primary, BTN which will create primary. a generic. I think it's like a black button. Yeah. Last time I checked. And then we can CSS that however we want to. Mm -hmm. So we've got a button here. It says more info, and it's going to go on click and do some stuff. Yeah. Okay. So then let's look at the code that we should do for that because we need to start keeping track of these things. And we're going to do it not in some other page, but we're going to do it here and keep track of it. So there's that product, right? Uh -huh. And we had said we would call uh, something like selected product. Yep. So the product that the user just clicked on. Um, and then we've been keeping the IDs. Mm -hmm. Let's ha handle that as well. Uh, selected product ID. Okay. Yep. Now this method doesn't exist. So it no. does not exist. So we're probably going to need to create that. Make it selected, select product, and we'll say string product ID. And then this is really easy. We'll just go and say, hey, selected product, there's your ID. And then just like we did before when we were starting to do our first mm -hmm. queries, and we'll talk about link in other videos a little bit, we go and get those products. Oops. And we're going to use that same query that we were using in the last video when we were making the ratings. Yep, so that's exactly right. So yep. get products dot, get the first one, and Where we'll just the say. The ID is equal to the mm -hmm. user specified yep. ID. So when you select the product, we know the product ID because we're passing it in here. So when they click on the button, it, there's lots of different cards. We'll go and we're going to squirrel it away in these two locations. Okay, cool. So that should be our product list as before. And mm -hmm. remember that we had removed it from here. Yeah, so we're going to need to still let this page know that that even exists. Right, and we haven't even told our application about Blazor. Remember when we added uh, controllers, we went and we mapped them. Remember when we added uh, our, uh, our endpoints for our web API? We yeah. added that as well. So back to startup.cs, your favorite place yep. that you never go. <laughs> yeah, the one that we ignore. Yeah, well, that's where we added our Razor pages and we added yeah. our controllers. 
Uh, it's just another service. Don't underestimate the underdog that is service.cs. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to add server-side Blazor. Again, mm -hmm. Blazor is an application model. You can pick or not pick. And the reason that we have to add it is that they don't know if we want to use it or not. Yep. And okay, awesome. so I had it there. What do I do next? Now we'll need to add another endpoint. So if we go back mm. under configure services, Okay. Um, back where we said, where we mapped the controllers and the mm -hmm. Razor pages, now we need to map all the Blazor. Right. So Blazor Hub will manage all of that communication. Mm -hmm. So the Razor pages are here. The controllers are managed there, and then our Blazor Hub are for our new things that we're doing. Yeah. So now we've told uh, ASP.NET about those things, but we still haven't mentioned right. what's going on here. Now, this can be a little bit scary because Blazor has a little bit of JavaScript, but we don't have to actually write any JavaScript. We'll just go and tell uh, the system that we want to use Blazor JavaScript, and they include this Blazor stuff. Blazor exists. Yeah, Blazor exists. It's a thing. Uh, you don't have to do anything. It'll just work. And we just put this script in, and then you can we're going to put it in, in index, but we could put it in layout or anywhere, really. Okay, and then this little bit of code might seem a little bit scary, but um, uh, you don't have to worry about it once it's written. Yep. We're going to wait for something to happen because it's an asynchronous thing, and mm -hmm. we're going to go and we're going to render, and then it actually cool. auto completes for me. Awesome. The product list, product list right here. Uh, and then we product want. Product list was the name of the component that we. Yeah, had. that's a good point. So then we're going to render product list. And then we're going to say render mode because the way that we want to go and render this is on the server, pre-rendered. We want the server to do all that work for us. Okay? And the product list, it can't see. And the reason that it can't see is because we have to tell it about it just like yeah. we did before. So we're going to go and use that new Contoso Crafts website. And it's not a model, it's a component. component. All righty. Extra, then, extra, read all about it. Yep, and then that, look, that just went away, and now it's not squiggly. So theoretically, we should have it back the way it was, except now we're using the Blazor app model for just this piece. And what's nice, again, is I can mix and match. Yeah, so it's pretty sweet. If you don't feel like leaving the stuff on the home page and you want to mm -hmm. stick it on the error page for some reason, you can do yeah. that. Yeah, we can do this whatever we want. And you can write an entire application with Blazor as well. So it's worth pointing out that you could go file new project say Blazor and do the entire application in the Blazor application model. You could do the whole application using Model View Controller, or you could use it with just pages. So it's really up to you with ASP.NET which application model you like. Leslie and I like to mix it up, so we are mixing it up. Yeah. Let's see if it works. If it works, ideally nothing really should change. We just should look remove that same sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. See, it should look the same. Ah, but we added more info right. buttons. Nice. And there's your button primary. And when we click on them, Nothing happens. No. We will find out how to fix that in the next video.